good evening good evening good evening um happy monday evening uh coming to you with a bit of an update on my bracket journey this evening um so for anyone that's been following along you'll know that i got diagnosed as carrying the bracket 2 gene uh, that of course is a gene mutation uh, that basically significantly increases my risks of developing either breast or ovarian cancer. Uh, as part of that diagnosis, I have been uh, in the process of meeting with various surgeons in relation to uh, minimizing, surgically minimizing my risk of breast cancer by way of a double mastectomy. So previously I had met with a uh, the first surgeon of the procedure, which was the breast surgeon, she has agreed to do a double mastectomy on me. That, of course, created a whole roller coaster of journeys where we had to go through a whole lot of testing um, just to ensure that I did not already have breast cancer. Essentially, um, there were quite a few concerns there. We went through all the tests, we got given all the all clear, she was happy to proceed. Uh, so, then the second half of the process was meeting with the plastic surgeon that I finally got to meet with this afternoon. Uh, so as the surgery that I'm looking at getting is a preventative surgery, I, I don't already carry the breast cancer, um, there's no need for chemotherapy, radiation, other things like that that, you know, unfortunately the people that have already been diagnosed with it require, that does give me the ability to have the double mastectomy and a reconstruction in the one surgery. Um, because of the length of surgery, like we're talking in excess of, of eight hours on the table, that obviously cannot be done by one surgeon. That's just too big of a job for one person. So you do require one, uh, two surgeons. So the first surgeon I've already met with is the one that removes all of my breast tissue, uh, the nipples, anything in there that does carry um, the risk of me developing breast cancer with my BRCA gene. And then they basically tag out and tag the next one in, who then comes on and puts on my new bolt-on accessories. Um, so that's who I met with today. He has agreed that he is happy uh, to proceed. He is happy to do the surgery for me. Um, basically sat down. Um, he was aware that I have had the gastric bypass, my weight loss surgery, 18 months ago. He had a lot of questions around that in terms of... Um, has my weight stabilized now, which it has, uh, and also around my diet, what I can eat, what I do eat, what my multivitamins I take. He was more than happy with the answers that I gave him, uh, and he basically explained the reason that he asked so many questions was that obviously to go undergo a surgery this large, like I say, it's eight hours on the table, it is a big surgery. Uh, an individual does need to have certain goalposts in terms of a healthy body giving their body the right nutrients and all of these things that it's going to need to recover from that uh, and he was more than happy with how I manage my protein intake uh, and things like that so he was more than happy to proceed in that sense we then moved into a physical exam so he just took lots of measurements pointed out to me that my left breast is larger than my right breast who knew um, and then went from there uh, he then also viewed uh, my stomach area, my emergency Caesar scar, and, and looked at different areas, um, you know, lots of different positions, put your hands here, squeeze in on your, all of these things. Uh, he also checked in the muscles on my back as well. Uh, then headed back to the desk um, to have a further bit of a chat. So he explained, obviously with any surgery, there are so many different ways they can do it. Uh, in terms of reconstruction, especially uh, within the same operation as a mastectomy, there are two main types. The most commonly used one, now I don't know the names of them, but the most commonly used one is one where they take basically the muscles that sit in behind your shoulder blades here, they detach it from the back and then they fold them forward to create a pouch to build a breast into. The, that is the procedure that I had, with my lack of medical knowledge, just from my Googling, assumed that we'd, we, we would be going down. Um, 
that one you're looking at around about 10 hours on the table uh, in surgery and then the recovery is quite extensive because of course you've got wounds on the front as well as on the back. Um, now that procedure does require you to be able to take some skin from the stomach area to use because what he explained was that uh, the muscle behind the breast it, it comes down and around like this but it doesn't connect underneath and of course when you're building new breasts it's like a bra you need to have a cup or a sling underneath to hold it up so that does require the donor or the, the patient having some skin removed from this area to build a sling in here now because of my drastic weight loss um, that option is simply not an option for me uh, he said well I do have the fair bit of excess skin that he could use it's all empty there's no um, healthy fat tissue attached to it it is very much just empty skin and furthermore because of the excessive weight that I've carried over the years the skin is very um, what did he say it's very stretched and there's no support to it it's basically not going to be useful to use in that manner um, because it's just not going to be strong enough to hold the weight to heal correctly Therefore, um, that puts us into the other surgery. Now, this has pros and cons. Um, pros with the surgery that we will be going down the line of is recovery time is much easier. Um, so the surgery that we will be doing is, uh, obviously, Surgeon 1 will remove my current breast, nipples, all of the tissue, everything in there that is considered breast tissue, that will all be taken out. They will leave a bit of skin from the bottom and a bit of skin from the top, um, but empty it all out from the inside. He will then come in, insert an implant, um, and basically connect these bits of skin and sew them across. I'm very lucky in the sense that uh, I have a lot of skin on my breasts because I used to be a G cup, have gone down to a little B cup. Um, so the skin's there to work with. So we said that that is an absolute, hugely positive thing for me. Um, they then will use the muscles that are already in place but to create that sling under here we are going to have to use uh, donor collagen so he went on to explain that the way they do this is that it's actually either pig collagen or cow collagen um, he said they work both work exactly the same no pros or cons to either it just essentially is what's available on the day um, they get the muscle that comes down here, they get some kind of sling made of this animal collagen, att attach it to the muscle here, come across and attach it to a muscle that comes down your, your chest plate here, and that creates a sling to put the implant in, on top of, and then essentially sew those bits of skin back together. I mean, it's a whole lot more complicated than that, but that's how I understood it. Um, so the positives is, way easy recovery you're looking at about uh, eight hours on the table um so a lot less a lot less obviously anesthetic in your system and there's literally one wound site I, there's no wounds on the back that we're having to deal with there's nothing on the stomach because we're not using any of that skin we are literally just in this one area so in terms of just that managing the pain the recovery and things like that much much easier he said to the extent that the nurse will have you up on your feet walking around the ward within five or six hours of coming out of surgery um, versus the other one where you are strictly in the bed for four or five days um, recovery is fantastic obviously the con side of it is that you are bringing not only the the implant itself but that donor collagen in as well um, as with anything external that you plant into the body there's always going to be risks of rejection, um, infections, things like that. But they do everything that they can to manage this. And he said, at the end of the day, you're already putting an implant in, which is a foreign object. There is no added risk of adding a second foreign object in there in terms of the collagen. Um, it is just a lot more expensive. We're going for health insurance. Wasn't too worried. Um, so that is the surgery he recommends. Uh, I trust him. I have been recommended this surgeon by a number of people that work in the health industry that I wholeheartedly trust with my life. So if that what he if that's what he recommends for me, 
I'm okay, A okay with it. Uh, he then went on to discuss uh, what is my preference? What do I want to be like afterwards? Uh, and I explained to him that obviously with my weight loss, I started as a G. I was always that girl with big boobs. Um, and psychologically, I have struggled immensely with the loss of my breasts, with my weight loss. Um, and not only the loss of size, but just the shape. There's, there's no cleavage. It doesn't matter what top or bra I put on. They just don't look good anymore. Um, so I'm using this BRCA diagnosis. I'm taking the silver lining that I can get some nice perky breasts back, essentially. Um, that I want to make them a feature of my body in a sense, in a way. Um, so I'm holding on to that silver lining as part of my BRCA. So he agreed definitely implants is the way to go then because I don't have any natural fat or anything left in them that we do definitely need to put those implants in. And then he went on to explain that implants do come in two different sizes, uh, two different shapes, sorry. Um, the more traditional or very commonly used implant is, um, it's kind of like a teardrop shape. So when you go side on, the breast will slowly go out and then have the round at the bottom. Very much like a natural breast. He said those are the implants that he uses most commonly. They are his preference as a surgeon to use. Um, he said the other option is more of a, a flat back, a ball, half a ball, essentially just a round, round bit that sticks on. He said they create much more of a perkier, uplifted um, result. Medically, no difference. Makes no difference which one you choose. Um, you know, they they work the same. There's no different um, consequences or, or benefits from using each other. He prefers the teardrop one because they look more natural. And then he started saying, but, and as he said, but, I said, yeah, I want the ones that, that, are, that are big around. He's like, but as I was going to say, from what I'm picking up from you, I think you're going to want the, <laughs> the perky ones. I'm like, yes, man. <laughs> He's like, the only reason I say I prefer the teardrops is as a breast surgeon, when I look at a teardrop, I can get them looking like a natural breast. Where to me, who knows what I'm looking at, when I look at the round ones, they look like bolt-on accessories. His words. Loved him even more from that point. Um, and I'm like, I want the bolt-on accessories. Like, we're doing this. Let's do it. Um, so he was more than happy with that. I said, ideally, I would like to be a large C, small D. That's kind of the, the range that I'm going from. He thought that would be perfect for my height, my build. Um, so that's where we settled. Uh, so next step for him is that he's now going to hopefully later this week meet with the breast surgeon that has agreed to do the double mastectomy for me. They will sit down, uh, nut out their plan between them, their plan of attack, put the proposal together, price it all. Um, in the meantime, his secretary will contact me to make a time to go into his consulting rooms. Um, they have some kind of setup of, of different bras or, or something that you can try on. He said, bring in a couple of your tops, a couple of your more worn common tops and try these different bras on so you can see the different shapes, the different sizes. Basically, you go in there, pick the one you want. My secretary will write it down and then that's my starting point. He's like, I can never make them exactly like you look in that changing room, but that's my starting point. That's what I'm aiming for. Okay, they might be slightly bigger, slightly smaller, don't know. But give us a, give us a feel of, of what you want. Um, so that will be happening later this week. He'll meet with the breast surgeon later this week to discuss their technical stuff. Uh, and then I meet again with the breast surgeon Wednesday next week, by which time they ha should have their proposal ready to go, I believe. Um, and then it's off to the insurance company to try and get past that next hurdle which is getting my health insurance to approve to pay for it um, of course because it is preventative surgery um, it creates more wiggle room for them essentially I did say to him in your experience as a surgeon I understand that all insurance companies are different all policies are different I said I am with Southern Cross I do have comprehensive insurance cover um, I, as a person, has been insured since in utero. My mother took the policy out when she was still pregnant with me. Um, 
what are your likelihood of me needing to fight for this versus it going through? And he said, if you were the average person coming in here, I would 100% say to you, be prepared to fight. And if you know how to fight in a business-minded manner um, and you know how to do it effectively, that you will win, but be prepared to fight. He said, however, I have read everything that you have been through in the last week, uh, the last eight weeks. I have read the MRIs, the ultrasounds, the mammograms. I have read how every single one of them have noted that you have very fibrous breast tissue, that upon examination it's extremely, um, it's, it's impossible to establish whether you've got lumps in there that could be breast cancer that have required all of this other stuff. And he said, essentially, you may have to make an argument, but you've got a very strong case. He said, the money that your health insurance has spent on you in the last eight weeks, they only have to do that for two or three years because they will need to do this annually to monitor you. They only have to do it for two or three years and they will have already spent more than this surgery will cost them. So he said, you will win. You may have to make one argument, but you will win. Um, so that was really good to hear. Um, so that's where we are currently. Yep, going to go and try on some different bra things um, and just confirm that I do like the big perky round ones. I don't see me changing my mind on that, but I'll play the game. Um, and to <laughs> decide on a size, he will meet with a breast surgeon, come up with their, their playbook, um, and we will get that off to the insurance company. Uh, in terms of timing, yes, extremely likely it will be happening this year. He uh, does not like to do any surgeries like this any later than mid-November. Uh, his reason for that is that he is a private surgeon at the end of the day. He takes annual leave, he takes holidays. He does not like having a patient that can is still in that post-op needing regular care with that high percentage still risk of any complications happening. He does not like them to be in that state when he's on annual leave over Christmas. So he cuts it off at mid-November and he won't do any after that until the following year um, when he's fully back on board. Uh, and he said, obviously it's pending my health insurance approval. Um, that's out of everybody's hands. We're in their game. They're ball caught with that. But he said, absolutely feasible that we will get this done this year. Um, so he asked me for my ideal date, if I could pick a date out of out of the sky um, so we are looking at very early November just because this will give me enough time to recover uh, before school holidays start of course being a single mum um, you know there's at least three weeks I'm unable to drive um, so I really need to get that intensive healing part that bed rest that not able to do anything part done while my skin my son is at school because during the week he's at school um, and then in the weekends he goes to his dad's so I really need to get that that element of recovery done while he's still in the school term um so that's how things are looking at the moment alabama hello angie all the way from alabama you have tuned into rolleston a little tiny town south of christchurch in the south island of new zealand how about that um yes new boobies they are coming emma new perky boobies <laughs> quite excited um so the only other thing, uh, like I say, I had done a lot of reading, a lot of research around the type of reconstruction surgery that I thought we would be having, which was the muscle from the back coming around. Obviously that's off the table as a result of my weight loss surgery. Um, so I've now got a bit of reading to do on this style. So the only other thing that in terms of my brain and what I've been prepared for that has changed is the scars. Okay. Um, so that other procedure would have left me with scars essentially just around the outside of my breast. Um, I was more than happy with this, like I wasn't concerned. I have decided I'm going to get the nipple tattooed on and I have already got a whole lot of screenshots in my gallery of just really beautiful fine line um, sort of flower, like daisy chain kind of flower lines that I was in time once fully healed get tattooed over those scars. The new scars will be a straight line across. Won't go the full width. He said it'll be sort of that size there. So just a line there and a line there. So they'll basically cut there, pull everything out of the holes, 
shove it all in and then pull that skin together and sew it. Um, hey, in the scheme of things, it's not a big deal, right? It's just in my head, I kind of had this picture of where we were going and that picture's changed a little bit. So I just need to get my head around that. Um, yeah, it's just different. That's all right. But I'm already on the drive home. I'm like, okay, well, if it's like this, we put a big tattoo of a nipple in the middle and then we just put a little flower at each, each side. We're sorted, right? We can figure this out. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, the things that really don't matter in the scheme of things. Um, so yes, that's where we are as well. Um, I did discuss to her, I uh, did discuss with him a concern that I did have, which was around pain management post-surgery. Um, as a result of my weight loss surgery, I'm unable to take oral anti-inflammatories. Um, the reason being anti-inflammatories are very prone to giving people stomach ulcers, right? That's just a side effect. It's an everyday normal side effect of an anti-inflammatory, um, which is why they always say eat on a full, take them with full stomach, all of these things. Um, because obviously nothing that goes into my mouth goes through my stomach anymore as a result of my replumbing. My stomach sits off to the side and the bile connects with my intestines, but nothing goes into the stomach. Um, Essentially, the risks of me taking anti-inflammatories are just too large. Because uh, if they created an ulcer in my intestines, that can create some pretty bad complications. So anti inflams are just off the table for me. Um, and they are used extensively in pain management post a surgery like this. So I did discuss with him, what does that mean? Is that an issue? He said, it's something you need to keep in mind. It's something that you need to keep mentioning to every person you meet on this counter, the anaesthetist on the day, all of these things. Because he said, yes, it will change how we manage you. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We can work around it. Um, he explained the way main pain management sits is that bottom tier is your Panadol. Next tier is your anti-inflammatories. Above that, you have codeine, tramadol, those stronger things. And above that, you're into the hospital level, morphine, IV, drips, things like that. So obviously post-surgery, you're in that hospital level. They like their patient to be 24 hours on that tramadol, uh, tramadol codeine level before they are sent home, and they want them within a day or two to be into the anti-flam. That's how your perfect patient is going to go. We can't do the anti-flam. So he said, all that's going to happen is you may need to be in hospital a day or two longer than our typical patient, just so that we can ensure that we're managing the pain. But you're just simply going to sit at that codeine tramadol level longer than everyone else. He said, sure, it's not ide ideal. Sure, there are addictive drugs. There's all of these things that go with it. But at the end of the day, it's not an issue. We can manage it. We can work around it. So don't stress. Um, absolutely, Angie. Send, send me a message. 100% don't care. Um, so, yeah, we can work around. We can work around the pain relief stuff. It's just something to be aware of. Um, I will be sent home, oh that was another thing, I will be sent home with drains. I was unsure if I would. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've been reading of people that have reconstruction surgery, they do come home with drains in them, which are essentially little tubes that come out into little medical bags. Um, the reason being, uh, so you have the muscle, and then the implant goes in, and then obviously your skin and stuff like that goes on top. And that creates a bit of a pocket between the implant and the skin. And that is prone to filling up with liquid. Now, if it fills up with liquid, that prolongs, it prolongs the, the healing because we want that skin to adhere and we want collagen and, and fibrous tissue and stuff to adhere to the implant so that it holds it all nice and secure in place. Um, so what happens is they send you home with a drain. It's just a little silicon tube that goes in the side here to just drain that liquid out while it's healing. Um, you also wear a special bra garment. You're very much strapped in to keep everything nice and tight. Um, and you'll typically keep those drains in for about six or seven days. Um, just to, yeah, remove any of that excess fluid to allow the healing process to go. So it's just something else. Um, but yes, recovery, uh, something I had been concerned about was that surgery that I had read up on was no driving for around six weeks. Um, again, single mum, um, totally manageable. I have an amazing 
tribe support network around me you know the school mums that live in the area that had already offered to do the pickups the drop-offs all of these things for me I knew it was manageable but at the same time it was in the back of my mind that's a long time um this surgery option it's only around three weeks that there's no driving so that alone is a huge relief for me it really is a huge relief for me um just being in the situation that I'm in so there was a bit of a brain dump, but I think it's all come out. <laughs> um, yeah, overall, it was a great appointment. Um, very comfortable with the surgeon. Um, he was great, put me at ease, absolutely knew his stuff. You know, even just those small things like, I don't do surgery after mid-November because I want to be here. If there's any post-op appointments, any complications, I want to deal with them. I don't want you going to public. You know, that to me shows a level of respect, uh, a level of... Um, here so um very happy with the surgeon absolutely 100 percent keen to go ahead he's happy to do it the other breast surgeon's happy to do it so it's really just a paperwork exercise i guess at this point and for me to go try on some bras and different booby shapes um so that's how we're sitting at the moment uh as i say i think that's everything i had to say um so yes the weight loss thing has hasn't complicated things it's just meant that once again I'm a special patient and I get to do things my way. <laughs> Which I like that. I like being unique. I like being different. Because um, normal is boring. Although some days I'd quite like a normal life. Just to see what it's like. But maybe one day. So that is me checking in. Um, yeah. That's how things are going. Again, thank you so, so much for everybody's support. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate having the safe place to do my brain dumps, um, to get all this information out of my head that gets said to me. Um, and I really miss, appreciate all the people that check in and, and wish me well and all of these things that means the world. So yes, thank you so much ladies um, and gentlemen. Um, as I say, next appointment that I have uh, locked in is Wednesday next week with the breast surgeon. So I'll definitely come on after that to give you an update. Um, but if anything happens in the meantime, I'll... I'll pop on and let you know as well. But here's to new perky boobies. Yes. <laughs> Have a great night.